Welcome to episode 58 of the Champagne Comedy Podcast, where we talk about the best Australian show from the 90s ever made, Frontline and other Degeneration Comedy tidbits. My name is Matt, and joining this podcast today is Alison Daniel. Yeah, and Alison and Daniel. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> we were. <laughs> another, another up close and personal intimate. Uh, uh, episode this, uh, this yeah, time. we've had some people pull out the last minute. Uh, but that's because of the time that we've recorded this one. <laughs> this is my screw up number one. I totally forgot that this is we've recorded this on Easter Saturday, so we've sacrificed our long weekends for your entertainment <laughs> and boredom. Is is sacrifice the right term oh, for geez. Easter? <laughs> 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 Oh no! I, I'm pro- I, I, I forget. I forget whether I've told this before on on the podcast. But there was there was one time when I was uh, part of a passion reading on Good Friday, and I was asked how how I went with it, and without even thinking, I said that I nailed it. <laughs> without a shadow. But, but of a, then a two line. days later, Daniel, you rose again in everyone's estimation. So it's all good. Uh, <laughs> all right. Do you want to get all the Easter puns out? No, I think I think we've done all the possible Easter jokes already. Yeah. Well, we do have a very special guest to get to here. So, uh, and I'm talking about very special because uh, this person is the first one that we uh, booked and managed to get as well for the second season after so many hiccups. This season, we have someone who's bloody funny, bloody talented. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to oversell you here. <laughs> an actor, an animator, a full-on movie geek and comedy geek as well, and that's all right. I can call you that, can't I? I can. I can. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And um, yeah, well, I love the fact that your ultimate acting experience is popping up on Neighbours, which is fantastic. <laughs> Amongst other things, we have Adil K. Thomas. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's such a relief uh, that we managed to get you on board. And this is my error number two, I have to say. I'm going to put it out front now. Okay, I had to uh, give Adele the episode for that we were viewing, right? So planned everything in advance. That was all good. And then today at the, I'll say the 11th hour, I realised I've given Adele the wrong episode to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, so I watched it about an hour ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so oh I had a nearly, my goodness! I had a minor anxiety attack. Go, oh crap, crap, crap. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I do apologise uh, publicly, Adele. That. No, that's uh, totally yeah. fine. <laughs> do you know what? I think I think there must be something in the water here because um, last weekend I sat down to watch Frontline and I I watched num- episode six of this series rather than episode five. And then I realised my mistake, and then I've since watched episode five. But yeah, I don't know what what episode did you end up watching first, Adele? I watched um, the one where he uh, the work experience. Yeah, that's the one I watched. That's the one I watched accidentally. (laughs) (laughs) Oh wow, I'm ready to go. (laughs) Yeah, which 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 will be next episode for all the listeners out there. So I'm not the only one who kind of fluffed up on that area. So that's really good to know. (laughs) So there you go. I think it's the order of, however, it was the it was distributed, and that's how it screwed yeah. up. So again, yeah, bl- blame um, blame the DVD manufacturers or whatever. Yeah, and yeah, Adele, please, uh, we're going to talk about you for a moment, if that's okay. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> this is one really cool thing. Other than being, uh, as I mentioned before, an actor, and uh, well, the main strength you've got is an animator. So. Um, <laughs> Tony Martin does the same thing when they give me a thank you on when I on their podcast, like over <laughs> it's just all this stuff about me. It over sells me. Um, but I work in animation. I was trained in animation. I don't actually animate. I work in all other areas of the production, so I don't do the animation because it's very very hard. <laughs> And you basically just have to do that as an animator. So, um, but I do the other things. I do character design, background design, art direction, direction, all the other stuff in production design. Yeah. One major piece for this, and 
um, we'll get you for when we get up to this show. You worked on Pacific Heat, which yeah. is Working Dogs yes. project. Yes, I was Working Dogs' first foray into the animation production world. <laughs> Handled it as best they could. <laughs> they were they were lovely to work for. I they were one of my dream um, production uh, companies to work with. I love uh, working dog people since forever. And so when this job opportunity came up, um, I heard about it through mm. the grapevine. And I was working in a middle of like a a kind of a job production job it wasn't animation but it was kind of like a holding place until animation production started up again at the time and when I heard that was going I'm like and I basically I was like hire me to the um, producer and um, I left the job I was in (laughs) which was a well-paying job because I was like no I am going to go work for Working Dog and uh, yeah it was good fun they were awesome yeah I've worked yeah, I've worked with the guys a couple of times. So, yeah. <laughs> you have a connection as well with, say, a loose connection. I'm stretching it here, but <laughs> with uh, Warner Brothers Movie World as well. As in, like, work? Yeah, work. work. Oh, no, every, <laughs> yeah, no, people think that they get it mixed up because all the performers perform at Movie World. I, I auditioned for Movie World back in the day when I was in my early 20s, but I fluffed up the audition, but I ended up getting... A job at Dreamworld instead, so I was a, I was a um, performer at Dreamworld in a Tomb Raider kind of attraction. So I had to be Angelina Jolie Tomb Raider, ah. uh, five days a week during the holidays. <laughs> when weren't you part of a particular movie that was filmed at Movie World, or well, just around the area on the Gold Coast? Something to do with Scooby Doo. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the gift that keeps on giving because I get royalty little royalty checks for it, but my scene was cut. But it was like one of the uh, greatest uh, moments of my twenties was going along and filming my part and getting to be in a makeup van with Freddie Prince Jr. and who I'd been in love with in my teen years. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I had him on this side and pretty damn cool. So I like telling this story. There was a guy sitting next to me here and he had a newspaper up and he put the newspaper down and it was Matthew Lillard. <laughs> and I was a mate, I was a huge Scream fan and Hackers fan and I'm like, oh my god, it was so nice and then down the end was Linda Cardellina Cardellini and I was a big um Freaks and Geeks fan, so I just was surrounded I was a big Buffy fan as well, but she wasn't around on set that day. She wasn't there. So I got to see her at a rap party from a distance. <laughs> she, so I am jealous. Excellent. <laughs> like, yeah, so I got to see her at a distance, but it was these two that were who I was sitting between. And um, my scene was with Freddie um, with two other girls and um, it didn't make the, the film, but it was a very nice experience and um, what I got to uh, the few minutes that I had with Freddie Prince Jr. is very nice person, so I, I have those memories. <laughs> I wrote about them in my production diary. I always used to write about every single job I did, and what. And so that 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 job has like multiple pages. I did forget to mention as well, other than totally getting animator wrong. So I do apologise for oh, that. No, that's fine. It's sort of, it's more the coordinator to the animators. <laughs> An author as well. So you, you're all different yeah, types of hats. I'm self-published author and I've written a few manuscripts because I'm trying to get, uh, US, I've got a, kind of been the process of getting a US literary agent. So they're looking at my manuscripts at the moment. But yeah, all these these books that you can see behind me, which you won't be able to see listening to this, but. Yeah, I've animated. I've not animated, illustrated, <laughs> illustrated a lot of children's books over the past six years. When I work in animation, I've also developed my own ideas and pitched them and made a pilot and stuff like that. So it's semi relatable. You build worlds in your head. I just have to write it down so that it reads well and c- communicates well. But yeah, I've just got all these characters and stuff bouncing around inside my head that. 
I have to get out somehow. Otherwise, I end up being crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely amazing. That's uh, bits of my life. And um, when you asked me to come do this, and then it's like, oh, the working dog guys, yes, I will talk about them. <laughs> By all means, that's what we're here for. Yeah. We, we may go a bit excessive, but where else can you vent uh, the appreciation of uh, this awesome team, that is? I have appreciation. Like, I mostly spoke to you on Pacific Heat. Um, it was Santo and um, Rob. They were mostly in and out of the production. I'm a big fan of Santo, so it was nice to talk to him mm. about all things football as well because we're both football fans. And I used to go to a lot of his football shows sit in the audience live those live shows in melbourne oh did you yeah yeah i used to go to them as much as i could oh, i was in one of the episodes i was in one of the audience things and, uh, and i just sat there because i didn't know nothing <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> no uh, though i tried to get a crispy cream out of him but didn't oh happen. yeah no you got to be fast on answering those football questions yeah yeah i, I think knew I one but i think i might have got one once yeah and i got to work with rob again on the Kath and Kim Dorella film. Ah. I was a stand-in with the crew on that uh, film for about six weeks. I also got cast as Rob's character's one-time girlfriend, and so I had to have a photo taken, and then they superimposed the two of us together. And I don't think it got used in the film, but I took a photo of it. It was in a frame on set. (laughs) So there's me (laughs) and Rob Sitch together with a guitar um, in costume. <laughs> Don't tell never... Jane. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got like a full head of hair and stuff. Um, but, yeah, and uh, I look a bit Nana Muscuri, so it's because <laughs> 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 I, I had darker hair at the time, long dark hair. So um, mm. I always thought, oh, I've got to take a photo of this. <laughs> One more thing before we actually start getting into the show. I'm only noticing this because it's on your jacket, but I, I've known about this, but it just prompted me to ask you. The current project you're working on at the moment, or yep. the one that you ha- you've have worked on and it's now been released at the time of this Yes, recording. Marvel's Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. Uh, it's an animated series. It's currently season two on uh, um, Disney Plus in Australia, and um, there's more episodes to come. Um and okay. yeah, it's a really nice. Um, it's a pretty cool animated show. It's got a lot of action, original music, really cool music, like a um, funky soundtrack, great color. Yeah, so it's a uh, it's a it's a Marvel um, IP um, from the comics, but um, it's like aged kind of like six to eleven year old kind of area, but also like families, parents can watch it because the family that's in it's quite funny as well. But um. Yeah, it's got a lot of kind of nice little life lessons into in it as well, relatable stuff. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's one of the best uh, projects that I think I've worked on in my career, and um, I'm very pleased to have been able to work on it. So I, I'm a BG color artist on it, which means mm-hmm. that me and my team uh, we color all the backgrounds and um, of the show based on our color kind of reference and stuff that's been provided to us and um yeah i make sure they do all their work properly (laughs) and then uh, because color is really important especially for like trying to keep things consistent and trying to set a mood for instance yes Uh, so in uni i wrote a thesis on how color communicates in 2d animation and back then was 2006 wasn't a lot of written stuff about it whereas I have I'm really passionate about color and um you do have to have a really good eye for it when you're working in color and animation because you have Mm. I don't want to get too uh, scientific and stuff about it but um just it's not just like a color in the palette that you see when you're putting down textures and everything all these little bits of other colors are creating the feel and the look and if you just miss one of them off or get one of them wrong like it's a if it's too much of a brown orange then a peach orange it will send the whole thing off and it's important to that part of our job is to reference the Disney stuff spot on because otherwise what's the point so yeah that's what my job well, also also it would it would be really important in these you know 4k ultra hd 
times yes. we're living in. Yeah, it's definitely it's one of the things like um, you have to have a good – you have to remember that there are people that are not just watching these on their phones where the, the image is crunched down, and this is in general for any animation production, is, you know, if there are, will be people watching these on, you know, 80 – 75 80 or big screens and if you have stuff that is not right or blurry or whatever um it's really going to be noticeable noticeable, yeah um so uh quality is key so it's uh and i'm Mm. very um pedantic about that but also you have to fight with time, (laughs) how much time you have to do this stuff. Um, Yeah, like when I've been a director in the past or an art director, you come up against um, budgets and time schedules and get told, no, you can't do that. And I'm like, oh. (laughs) Well, we we love our pedantry on this podcast, so you're in very good company. Yeah, cool, good, good. (laughs) Excellent. My yeah, I, I um, I'm, I'm kind of interested in what you think of the um artistic choice um of shooting frontline using a home video camera, because you know I'm watching it now <laughs> yeah. on a big yeah. television and it looks like you're kind of watching it through several layers of stocking or something, but it's really you interesting know. you mention that because I actually went into the credits to look at the show. Actually, it was funny. I was at a movie in the cinema the other day, and the guy came up to me and said, "If you're waiting," if the usher said, "If you're waiting for any post-credit scenes, there aren't any." I'm, no, I'm just sitting through the credits <laughs> because I will look at the credits. But yeah, um, <laughs> I noticed that Santo's camera operator on the show. So that's interesting mm. to know that yeah, he's, if he's filming with what he's filming with, but I guess it gives it that early days being there, rough and kind of feeling and hand mm. hand on feeling that er, that early I guess like that similar feeling they had in the office and stuff where it's kind of moving around and smoking mm. rushing around yeah whereas I think um well since well since frontline these kind of shows have obviously you know become much more it's yeah. been more common to shoot in that documentary style but but it's interesting that Frontline I think is the only one that actually used the kind of fly on the wall home video camera, whereas every other one they used proper broadcast cameras yeah, and then right. treated the imagery with some kind of wash to make it look kind of more like a documentary. Yeah. Um, so you retain that quality, but get and you that would never sort think oh, when you're making it, when you're actually making the production. Oh, in the in twenty years from now, they're going to have HD whatever whatever's and stuff and Mm, and then also i think of course was it a choice or was it just because that's what was available and the best thing that you know the 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 team were grabbing at the time (laughs) Uh, yeah to to be fair they 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 did take a a lot of trouble uh uh, with the the footage basically uh, the they went from video transfer to film and then back to video again that sounds like the the geeks that they are (laughs) film nerds there. <laughs> so were you picking up some of their kind of nerdiness when you worked with them on Pacific Heat? Um, I'd, bl- I'd say this in the nicest way. It was a bit of a learning curve for them um, because they'd never worked in mm. animation. And when pe- and this is not just them but anyone that works in live action, when they go into animation and um, we do it where because, we, you know, we, store- we storyboard every- everything. And when you storyboard, then you put it into an animatic, so it's all locked off, and then those that animatic is chopped up into sequences and scenes, and then those are given to the animators and the layout and background artists and um, character layout. So everything's pretty much locked off because you've got a, a deadline that you have to meet in deliveries. Um, there's no extra footage, you know, made and, and stuff like that. So that's for people, I guess, coming in from live action, you know, it's kind of a novelty when you hear that someone has boarded their stuff, you know, like James Gunn's boarding, you know, Superman and um, Miller's doing boarding all of Fury Road and, and stuff like that. And so everyone's like, wow, you put, but, it, but it's kind of the thing that you have to do in animation. Um so yeah, it was they they were really open to learning and um, 
I like stepped aside at one side and had a chat with Santa about why I did a certain thing a certain way and and um, it was good to have those conversations and they would come in they're really involved in um, the art team out the back and um, you know so they they didn't just like they didn't they didn't just like be missing and dictate or anything like that not at all they were just it was really open and I think you know they were were realized that it was a a very different thing and it was um an interesting challenge um yeah. yeah, it's it sounds very different to um, yeah some of their well most of their other productions where they're a lot more hands on. Yeah, I would guess considering they're not well versed in animation, mm. they do have to surrender a bit of creative control by the sense. Yeah, because um, with uh, when you're going to animation, it's such a collaborative production across mm. the board. It's just everyone has their hands in, everyone touches it everyone puts a bit of themselves into it uh, and then you've got people from lots of different backgrounds with experience and you kind of got to be open to talking to everyone um and not kind of not not being there so um yeah the worst thing is to leave an animation production alone because they need communication and talking and interesting yeah so uh but it was like i would listen to the animatics and um it was it was funny. It was just hearing Sam Pang's voice come in, or Santo, or all of them coming in. So it was like listening to a nice little radio play <laughs> from them all. Have you ever heard of Johnny Swank before? <laughs> no. Because Johnny Swank was a radio serial which uh, they did um, in the mid to late nineties, and it was played during the breakfast shows on the two day network. So right. you've been in. Uh, were you based in Melbourne or Queensland um, during the nineties? Oh, that would have been Gold Coast. So oh, I had okay. Tony CFM. Mc- oh, that might have been CFM. Yeah, I it was think. CFM yeah. with t- with Tony and Mick Malloy. <laughs> <laughs> during the breakfast show, there would have been a, like a three minute serial, right? And uh, mm. it was Johnny Swank, where it will be Rob Sitch as Johnny and uh, Santo as K two, and it would just be complete slapstick, similar to Pacific Heat. And so yeah. when they developed that, I'm going, oh, that's Johnny Swank, but in animation style. Right. Did they mention anything about Johnny Swank? No, 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 I don't believe I don't believe so. But it was for me, it was just, yeah, I just like listening to the animatics because I guess that was coming through what they had done before with them recording, them recording the dialogue it was probably felt the same kind of way. It was just, in the end, it was just an animated version of their radio play, yeah. Of a, of a radio yeah. play with pictures, And I yeah. thought it was unfair that it got, it would get, like, compared to Archer. Yes. Because I didn't think that was a <laughs> yeah. direct... If, if, you, if, you, if, if you do a look up for Pacific Heat on uh, YouTube, you, you'll find a, a lot of clips because it, it made it to the US version of Netflix. But, yes, you do also see quite a few videos going, why is this like Archer? Yeah. And I think yeah. that's an un- unfair comparison because it was just the way that it was made. But listening to it, if you're a fan of Working Dog and what they do, it's just typical Working Dog and that kind of fun stuff. So, I mean, I would, I, I lived very close to the Working Dog production um, office when I was on that so just I'd ride my bike there and every day I'd be like I can't believe I'm riding my bike to go work for working dog <laughs> <laughs> this is great <laughs> cool. we're, we're going to have you on as much as possible now so uh, okay <laughs> yeah. I'm regretting not asking you earlier <laughs> so, certainly when when we eventually get around to Pacific <laughs> um, yeah I mean yeah there's 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 a few there's probably a few other series in front of that yes yes uh, but yeah, we we will probably get to Pacific Heat eventually. Yeah, you're on every episode for that. Thank you. <laughs> you'll be like, do you remember this? And I'll be like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> we'll be like seventy years old by the time we get to Pacific Heat. <laughs> I remember Pacific Heat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness gracious! All right, let's skip. Uh, for we don't have any back chat, so let's get straight into uh, your program guide, Daniel Hay. It's all in this week's TV Week, packed with great family entertainment. Oh, Jesus! 
<laughs> Daniel Genie's program guy. They just heard that for the first time. I only made that uh, literally like an hour before we came on here. <laughs> so, well that's worth very the fresh. effort. Yes. I told you I'd refresh it. <laughs> that is yeah, really something I've got to say. Um, okay, so there's a few events that have uh, happened in the week between episodes four and five in uh, August 1995. Um, the first one, it is kind of tangential to uh, The Late Show, uh, but uh, it's also quite notable just for um, being a, a fairly famous live TV moment and also um, for the TV show it appeared on. On the Thursday, the 17th of August, Ted Whitten died uh, at age 65 uh, from prostate cancer. Oh, Mr. Football. Yeah, and uh, he was part of uh, Commercial Crime Stoppers in season one in 1992, doing the ads for uh, Motorola phones sold by communications partners because they mean a business. <laughs> yeah, basically the news of uh, Ted Whitten's uh, death happened during um, the episode of the footy show that was going live to air. Basically the cast wasn't informed until the final ad break of the, of the show. Probably for me the night that uh, I'll always remember was the night we announced that uh, Ted Whitten yeah. died and uh, because it was raw emotion and of course uh, we came out and it was the last break of the night and uh, just to, you could almost feel the oxygen being sucked out of the studio as people just went silent <laughs> yeah. and to look across and see Doug Hawkins yes. and, and yourself and everybody being uh, so emotionally... Melancholy. Yeah, it was a really emotional night. Eddie got out of his seat, he came across and he said, listen, Hawk, I've got some bad news. Um, Ted's just passed away. Was it an AFL player? Yeah, very, very famous... Um... I'm just trying to, of, of the 60s and 70s. Right, yeah. Yeah, I only know him as Mr. Football and selling motor rollers, that's it. What happens in the clip, Daniel? I got it from a best of DVD, which I happened to find in an op shop. I definitely wasn't going to pay for full price for it. But, yeah, basically, um, <laughs> as, 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 as they say, <laughs> the, the oxygen gets sucked out of the room and, yeah, basically, um, yeah, uh, Ducky Hawkins is quite distraught. Um, there is something you don't see every day uh, in in the in the clip, which is Sam Newman being lost for words. Oh, wow! Yeah. <laughs> so it just it's just sort of like yeah, the the show basically. Uh, yeah, thank goodness, as, as they say in the clip, thank goodness they found out when they did rather than before the show because there probably wouldn't have been a show. So, so sorry to sort of start on a downer, but it, it gets kind of a bit better. We also had the premiere of Don't Forget Your Toothbrush. Hosted by the star of Funky Squad, <laughs> Tim Ferguson. Nice. Oh man, I haven't thought of that for a few years. So there's there's plenty of, of clips of um, uh, and full episodes of um, the Australian version of Don't Forget Your Toothbrush on YouTube. And you can dance away to Please Sir, the theme song. Do -do 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 -do. Or sing Volare, whoa, no. at the end. <laughs> Um, and it's it's, yes. uh, it's based on on a, a British version. There's some uh, some clips and episodes of that on YouTube as well. Um, I heartily recommend the episode of the British version uh, that has Barry White as a guest. Oh. <laughs> so the the, the, wow. the the Australian version they would sing Volare at the end. Uh, in the British version, it was an old. Uh, it was a song called Bring Me Sunshine, which is associated with a, a comedy duo. Uh, called Morecambe and Wise. Morecambe and Wise. And so, and yeah. so, yeah, they would they would sing that at the end of the the UK version, and uh, yeah, Barry White joins in. <laughs> it's just it's so weird. The UK version had Barry White. I, from my memory, the Australian version had Ray Martin. So <laughs> you know, uh, draw draw a comparison. Uh, I don't think Ray sang, but he certainly turned up to do one of the stunts. Yeah, it was it was yeah very stunty game showy. Broadcast live city of your pants kind of stuff. I might also just mention there's also a US version that's uh, got a couple of episodes on YouTube as well. Not as good in my opinion, but it's hosted by um, Mr. Cooper himself, Mark Curry. Oh, hanging with Mr. Cooper. Hanging with Mr. Cooper, yeah. It, it was made for, for Comedy Central and it sort of, it seems to suffer the same problems that the US version of Taskmaster had, which is that it's sort of, it's all a bit off and it's being cut in half, um, in half uh, running time. It only goes for half an hour, which just, it doesn't quite work. He had a bit of a tragedy 
when uh, like he when he disappeared. <laughs> huh. uh, I I don't know why I did this, but I went down the rabbit hole of where Mr. Cooper because I was yeah I think Mark, it was Mark because Curry I was looking up 90- yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, sorry, Mark Curry, yeah, where I was looking up um, TV shows from the 90s to buy on iTunes, right? And so you got, you know, the Family Matters and uh, um, and I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> um, and, yeah, like, uh, and I was looking up hanging with Mr. Cooper and I couldn't find anything. And when I looked at Mark Curry and he had an accident where there was an aerosol can that fell down the back of a radiator and exploded. I think I might have heard oh, about wow. this. Yeah, yeah, that happened in the noughties for him. Wow! So, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is on Wikipedia. It it bur- he was doing the laundry at the time, and it burnt more than twenty percent of his body, and he spent many months recuperating. Yeah, how screwed up is uh, that? What a freak accident! Yeah, and then it really, really affected his life. And and well, yeah, he he mentions how. Yeah, how – anyway, yeah, I'm not going to read this bit out from Wikipedia, but you can go and have a look. It, yeah. it really affected his life, essentially. Yeah. Damn it. Well, I yes. just queued this up. <laughs> hey! Yeah. You'll, yeah. you'll see, totally you'll see when, you, when you look up, don't forget your toothbrush on YouTube. Um, I'll just uh, – Sasha uh, Molitoritz uh, wrote about a trial run that was done a couple of weeks before the actual live broadcast. In one stunt, a reluctant hero was plucked from the audience, forced into a raincoat and pelted with five liquids. The victim's task was to name each beverage, lowbrow humour which went down well. After the victim named all five correctly and was led away, Timbo ran back into the spotlight, but with the floor still soaked, he promptly fell on his bum. Fortunately, he wasn't hurt, and the recovery was so smooth it almost looked scripted. Such a sprightly recovery bodes well for the show, she writes. You know, it's funny. I can't. Yeah. Re- I watched this show. Mm. I can't remember it, but I do, like, I remember that uh, I went to high school with someone who was obsessed with the show and the host. <laughs> so they're the things that I can remember. <laughs> but I don't remember actually anything from the show, but I know it, I watched it. Well, yeah, I mean, so, the, the, other, the other thing is that it was a one-season wonder, essentially. And, I mean, you know, everybody's going, like, why don't they bring back this show and why don't they bring back that show? And I think maybe one of the reasons why we haven't seen a show like Don't Forget Your, Don't Forget Your Toothbrush is that it would have to be so goddamn expensive to put on, especially yeah. live. Yeah, yeah. It's not like yeah, the you... logistics of it were quite incredible, yeah. weren't they? Because they, they would yeah. cut to all Hell, these live locations. Yeah, held a lot of live crosses, yeah. Yeah. But but my other memory of it is, is how it divided people, you know. Some people really loved it. Some people absolutely loathed it. And I think that given it was expensive and there were a lot of logistics involved, it probably didn't rate enough for them to continue with yeah. it is, is my yeah. guess on it. The other premiere that happened during the week is, um, well, it's technically the return of Big Girl's Blouse. Um, it's a, a sketch comedy show starring Gina Riley, Magda Zhabansky and Jane Turner. Now, initially it was up I'll against <laughs> ER. Oh, he's off. He's trying to find the DVD box I'm going set. I'm to get the DVD. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm going to try and find mine now. So this is the thing. I I did sometimes watch it, Mm. but I watched it between the ER ad breaks because I loved ER. So, so yeah, originally it was up against ER on Channel 9. Uh, but um, yeah, obviously <laughs> against that juggernaut, both Alison and uh, Matt both uh, holding up their DVDs up to the webcams. Oh my and goodness! And I can and I can say they are they are also wonderful people to work with because I worked with them on the Kath and Kim Dorella stuff. And uh, we'll, see, we'll see. Like, like was, Kath, yeah. Kath and Kim was born out of Big Girls Blouse. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually, no. it, it says on the DVD. Oh, really? It says featuring Kath and Kim, the early years. Well, they might not have been called it, Kath and it, Kim. But... Right? Didn't no, it come no, out no, of no, Full no, Frontal? No, no. He, hold on, I've got something for you huh. because okay. I've been recently watching them. I've been recently <laughs> watching them, so it's fresh. Okay. Of course, you have. Fast forward. Yeah. Fast forward. That was it. I said Full Frontal by mistake. Yeah. Fast forward. Uh, no, yeah. Kel, uh, Kel, Kel and Kath appeared yeah. in. 
fast forward. In they did their dancing, right? They're yeah. Well, that, that, that was Les Larby and um, what's uh, Margaret Bland and Les Larby. Hold on. Give me one moment. I actually tweeted about it and no one uh, paid attention to me. <laughs> so so I was just, while, while Matt's looking that up, so, yeah, originally up against ER, didn't rate very well up against that juggernaut. So it did, um, uh, uh, it began with a one-hour pilot and three of the eight half-hour episodes made were shown before it was pulled off air. It was then re-edited to make four one-hour programs and it, it resumed, um, well, uh, resumed again on Friday the 18th of August at 8.30 between footy show Four Quarters at 7.30 and the Collingwood v Hawthorne uh, delayed game at 9.30. <laughs> That's where I would have been watching but, it mm. because I have watched it. <laughs> here, here we go. First appearance of Kath and Kel. Fast forward, season four, episode four from 1992. Oh, wow. Yep. Bam. Wow. There's your mic drop. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. I remember that in my head because I loved Fast Forward and Full Frontal. One of the yes. Fast Forward uh, um, team is uh, one of the actors. He walked past my booth when I was tabling at uh, one of the uh, conventions once and I stopped him and I'm like, I used to watch you when I was a kid on Fast Forward. And he was like, really? Oh, that's so <laughs> lovely that you remember me. <laughs> I was talking to him, but yeah, it was just, I was like, I had to stop you. <laughs> can I, can I, you just reminded me if I know this is going to be a long episode. Um, <laughs> um, this is what happens when half your team don't turn up because of a certain holiday. Um, the, uh, <laughs> you just reminded me of a, I don't know if I've already told this on the podcast or not, but for Full Frontal, it was 1990. 899, I think it was. Yeah. Anyway, it was late 90s because I was in high school and we had gone to Sydney as a for a school trip, right? So being uh, gone to a Sydney school, good old public. Um, so we went to Darling Harbour, right? Uh, because we had played uh, a softball team, uh, a game against all the other schools and we got into the grand final and we lost because of my stupid and unco uh, batting. So, but as, no, hey, I'll I'll take full responsibility (laughs) because I was the last person we lost the game. But the the teacher rewarded us anyway for getting so far um, because we were the underdogs. Um, We went to Darling Harbour and this is when Harbourside, the shopping centre, used to exist. Well, we went to Time Zone and then when we were there, I see this tall, tallish, bald guy. I'm going, hold on, he looks familiar and he's, with his uh, child, right? Turns turns around. It's Ross Williams. Ah. And then I've just got mm. me being a kid in high school, going <gasps> being a big old comedy nerd. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I, and I freaked out, and I just went, "Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god!" <laughs> and really loud in the shop. <laughs> and I go, oh, are, "Are you Ross Williams?" And he goes. Well, he didn't say anything. He just looked at me and just nodded and then quickly looked down. And then I've gone, hi. <laughs> and then I've gone and run and get my the rest of my uh, fellow friends, classmates and stuff like that. Okay. You're not going to believe it. Russell Williams is in time zone. And then we're all gone in there. No one believed me and he had disappeared. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh... yeah. So I scared him off. <laughs> <laughs> my brush with uh, fame with uh, Russell Williams. I did a similar thing. I was in Melbourne, sort of early nineties, and I saw Francis Greenslade in a cafe, <laughs> and I, I, I like stared at him, and then he, and then he, he turned and he saw me, and I just went Ugh, like this, like I just turned away really quickly, and then I just could not turn around again because I thought, oh my god, how embarrassing! I've like stared at this guy, and then when I finally got the courage to turn back again, he left the cafe. <laughs> so. I- and you know. the restraining orders have been in place ever since. <laughs> Absolutely. You followed him, down, followed him down an alleyway. <laughs> yeah. I, I was in a I, – I should have done that. I was in a um, – I just went along to an American accent kind of small kind of coaching class thing that was being held with by the MEAA. I just went along to it and um, there was like some big name – Australian actors in there. And I'm like, what am I doing here? Ooh. And Francis Greenslade was in there. <laughs> so I'm sitting there. 
and and, and how how was his American yeah. accent? Very good. They were all very good. <laughs> there were all these professional act, like actors, and I'm like, what am I doing here? <laughs> that's, that's, that's cool. does, does this mean that like? You know, in the way that McAuliffe turns up in weird, terrible American films, is Francis Greenslade trying to cash in on that market? Like film, American films shot in Australia, which weirdly have people that you recognise from Home and Away and stuff in them. Yeah, yeah, but nobody knows yeah. them from overseas. But when you watch an, like yeah. a film that's been made here, this is sounding like that Ricky Stenuti, which got filmed in, I think, Melbourne. Yeah, I haven't seen I, it. Yet, I, 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 I haven't, I haven't seen it, but yeah, there's. Apparently, a whole heap of uh, Australians yes. in there putting on their best uh, uh, American accents. I'm still amazed that so there was an American accent dialogue class being put on by the Media, Entertainment, and Arts uh, Alliance. Basically, going like, "There's a whole bunch of Americans down here. You better learn your American yeah. accent so you, you can get in you, their productions." It's is that, um, that it's what more happened? so that you're learning the a coach comes along and goes through the approach to the American accent because if you just put on an American accent, it, it's put on. There's this whole thing where um, yeah. there's an attitude that comes with different accents and different regions and stuff like that. So, you know, mm. if you do an American accent with an Australian attitude, it's not going to really swing. There's different things. And Margot Robbie has spoken about it before when she does like an American kind of a New York accent or something. It's like chewing gum in the mouth. There's all these different ways to approach stuff, yeah. Weren't you called out because of your Australian accent at a certain comic con? X-Men. Oh! oh, There we go. (laughs) Yes, thank you. There's so many little (laughs) pop cultural things I have to unlock. Yeah, I celebrated that uh, I celebrated that at the in the last year or something, oh, it's like one of the best moments of my life. Okay, so quickly I'll just say I went to Comic-Con for the first time in 2013 and, uh, you know, I slept outside to try and get into Hall H, which is one of the major things you do. I also cosplayed one of the days I was there. It was great. But this one day I camped out, slept on the grass, met a bunch of friends that I still know today, got in there, went all day through all these panels and one of them was the days of future past x-men panel and i just was like i need to get in and look at this because i'm a big x-men fan huge x-men fan and i just i just wanted to be there and i was like i've got to ask hugh jackman a question or something and he came up and he spoke on stage by himself and then he went off and i'm like wait they've got to do q a i was like ready to like run from my seat to the microphone and then their surprise was that they brought the entire Days of Future Past cast on. And I'm like, oh, my God. (laughs) And they went, okay, so now we're going to invite people to come up and ask questions. I'm like, like, (laughs) run to the microphone, like line, the line of the person in front of me asked well, two people in front of me asked the question that I was going to ask, which was about, oh, if you want to do a Wolverine (gasps) musical? And I'm like, I stole my joke (laughs) the joke question and everyone's gonna laugh because he's gonna sing now as wolverine and he did and six thousand people are laughing i'm like i have no question i'm just gonna go to my default question but i still need to talk to hugh jackman (laughs) so but i didn't know what to say but anyway so i just went up and i was just like uh, hi, I'm Adele. I'm from Melbourne, Australia. And uh, before I could say anything else, Hugh Jackman on the stage goes, woo, and I just went, yeah, woo. <laughs> and then he goes, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. And I just never before in my life done this went, oi, oi, oi. <laughs> <laughs> Instinctively. Like 6,000 people <laughs> in this crowd, majority are American. There's uh, the whole crowd. Brian Singer's like, does the hand over the head thing. Like, I don't know what that was. <laughs> you got Ian McKellum and and um, all of the, like, cast Michael Fassbender laughing. And I just went, oh, well, I didn't expect to do that. And Hugh Jackman goes, me neither, Adele. And I'm just like, oh, I've just died right here. <laughs> and, and then I said, well, that made my trip worth it. And he's, like, laughing. And then I went, okay, better just ask my question. <laughs> I asked my question, which didn't get answered. But then James McAvoy made a joke in relation to 
me being Australian and Hugh Jackman having that interaction and got all another laugh and I went back to my seat and then everyone around me was like, oh, my God, that was so cool. You're Australian. And I'm just like, I'm good for the rest of the day. <laughs> my geek meter is overflowing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to hear Ian McKellen oh, do Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. Yeah, yeah. It was fun because Anna that Paquin was there on that, but I think she's, oh, wow. Anna she, she okay. didn't really respond, so I don't think she's as Australian anymore, <laughs> whereas Hugh Jackman's just like. She's, in, she's New Zealand, isn't she? Anna yeah, Paquin? she's in New Zealand. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah? she is. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, then that, that explains that then, but yeah. No, thank you for reminding me. I love re- reminiscing about that moment. <laughs> I do my research on my guests, so, I, you know, I'm sorry, Daniel, I completely hijacked your program guide. Yeah, go on, go on. <laughs> yeah, go on. No, it's, 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 it's all right. I'm, I'm always loving the tangents, um, especially, especially when, when it comes from our yep. guests as well. Um, so let's uh, quickly get through the, the program guide proper. So uh, starting with the ABC, Frontline at 8, at 8 o'clock. Uh, it's uh, got a small capsule review uh, from Robin Oliver in the Sydney Morning Herald Guide. Uh, he writes, A few people have written surprisingly similar letters pointing out that this column has a myopic view of this satirical show. Makes me feel proud to be Australian, writes one kindly zealot who seemed able to find his own words. We did consider last week's Frontline a cut above the others, but nothing yet matches last year's hostage episode. We notice that in the real world, one contender has changed its promo approach while the insincere smile remains on the face of the Cheshire Cat. They don't say who the Cheshire Cat is. I mean, it's either, well, it'd probably either be Ray or Stan at this... Uh, no, actually, it wouldn't be Stan because... Um, it's 95. Um, uh, uh, today, tonight started at, at the start of uh, 1995, which replaced... Uh, real life that Stan Grant was on. It's a Neil Mercer era. Uh, then after Four Corners and Media Watch at 9.30, it's another episode of Absolutely Fabulous. Season 3, episode 4, titled Jealous, uh, which aired in the UK in April. Uh, Patsy accompanies Adina to a prestigious awards dinner, uh, but she loses out to a rival despite having bribed the judging panel. And uh, if you don't know what uh, Eddie does, um, well, she can tell you herself. I'm sorry, Mum, but I've never really seen what it is you actually do. (laughs) P.R. Yes, but P.R. I P.R. things. P.R. places, concepts. Lulu. Lulu. I P.R. them. I am, and if you've heard of me, I have P.R. I make the fabulous, I make I make the crap into credible, I make the dull into delicious. delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Is that clear PR? Whatever PR is. <laughs> Over on Channel 7, we've got Lois and Clive, The New Adventures of Superman. Uh, it's the final episode of Season 2. Uh, titled, And the Answer Is, uh, this aired back in oh, May in the US. I remember that cliffhanger. I remember the cliffhanger. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, it's the one uh, where... So, yeah, Superman's real identity is in danger of being exposed by a diary written by a man from the future. And that's the one Ooh. where uh, Clark proposes to Lois. I yeah. loved <clears throat> Lois and Clark. I was 14 at the time, and so I was definitely watching Lois and Clark, yeah. All right, over on SBS, we've got Defenders of the Wild. We kind of had a one-week reprieve with a different documentary called L.A. Stringers last week, but we're back to the British documentary about the Defenders of the Wild, this week focusing on the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society. So something, I think it's a bit close to, closer to home. It's New Zealandish, isn't it? Sea Shepherd? I've I been on Sea the- Shepherd are kind of international, but... Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. why not go to New Zealand? I mean, they've got a history of it, haven't they? You know, Rainbow Warrior and stuff like that. Probably too late to uh, to feature in Defenders of the Wild, but uh, I don't know if they make another. If they do a gritty reboot, <laughs> why not? Defenders of the <laughs> Earth. Oh wait, that's taken. <laughs> Defenders of the Sea. Yeah. <laughs> You've got, All right. Do uh, a Captain Planet type thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh well. I'm surprised yeah, this, oh. that I'm surprised they haven't. Defenders really of the Fire. <laughs> Defenders of the Fifth Element, and then Defenders of the Heart. That 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 might be a late night time slot. The Defenders of the Heart. That's on the SBS. <laughs> that's definitely that's definitely Sex Before Soccer. Yes. Yep. 
it's a Friday night in the 90s on SBS for sure. Mm. <laughs> Introduced by Des Mangan. <laughs> Uh, and then afterwards you would play uh, Hercules Returns. <laughs> <laughs> that just, uh, it got re-released on Blu-ray uh, Yes, recently don't let well. me get yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've got it on Blu-ray. <laughs> Sits next to my house wet horror Blu-ray. Both from Umbrella Entertainment. Always look out for their stuff. They do They do excellent special collection limited edition stuff. I know. I had my eye on their Must of the Universe just recently that they, they brought out. But um, I was thinking about this period. I was looking at this period of this time, 95, because I was 14. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, I was definitely watching Lois and Clark. And I thought if this if this show had played probably when I was like 19 or 20, I definitely would have would have been watching it. But I was still kind of I was watching like I was coming home in the afternoon and watching like amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and like yeah. Henry's Cat and Wheel of Fortune and all the mm. Price is Right and all that stuff. So, yeah. Um, amazing was awesome. Amazing was amazing. Oh, no it was great. It yeah. was one of those where you, like as a kid, you shout at the TV and go, the, it's up there, look up. Or, behind you, behind, behind you. you. <laughs> or when they're playing um, Mario or whatever, and you're like, I could get more ki- more coins. No. <laughs> or they're like Donkey Kong. You, or, can, you don't send a, 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 a you know a straight A student to go play <laughs> Nintendo games. <laughs> Actually, I'm just I'm, I'm having a, a quick look at the the TV guide to see what was playing in the afternoons. Uh, yeah, that was definitely amazing at four thirty. That was after Mighty Morphin Power Rangers at four o'clock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then the the uh, the two tent poles of Family Feud and Wheel of Fortune yeah. uh, from five until the the news at six on Channel Seven. Yeah, good times. Yeah, uh, ABC had The Ferals, Banana Man, Rocco's Modern Life, Henry's Cat, The Grassy yeah. Junior High. Oh. Yeah. Mm. That was great, and then and then the the the, the Britass Empire to try and bridge between the kids and the oh, series. Oh yes, 7 o'clock the Britass Empire. <laughs> yeah, and I just realised too, ninety five was uh, Power Rangers the movie when that came out because that was filmed in Sydney. Oh, Angel right. Grove, Angel Grove was Sydney, and I had Jamie Croft in it, who and Peter Mockery, who kind of helps. Power Rangers saved the day, and I just remember the monorail being taken out, and they had the Falcon or the Eagle or whatever the Zord was be used as a track for the monorail <laughs> to go over. All, all, and all they I took- remember from the from the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie is Center Point Tower being sort of ripped out of its uh, out of the earth and sort of being used as a weapon against another giant kaiju looking thing. Being a Sydney cider, it's not talked about anymore it's taboo so you go over to Pitt Street and it's like <laughs> you remember what no I no. and I Walk wonder off. if they filmed that here off the back of Street Fighter the was Street Fighter film oh yeah Street here? Fighter with uh, Kylie Minogue yeah so I don't Jean-Claude. know if that was I got that on Blu-ray too I could go. <laughs> actually I do oh. <laughs> sorry <laughs> My fault. hey just just quickly while we, we're looking at the the sort of afternoon uh, stuff. So uh, Channel 9 had um, Batman at 4 o'clock, My Generation at 4.30. I think that might have been one of those uh, game shows similar to Amazing where they where schools compete against each other and you know, like win, you know, like an, a computer for their school, for instance. In the encyclopedia. I think, I think it might have been one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Channel 10 had um, uh, Ocean Girl at 4.30, The News at 5, and then Echo Point at 6 o'clock. Which was uh, yeah another sort of um, uh, soapy um, in the vein of oh, I can't remember the other one they had like um, Paradise Beach. Paradise Beach yeah. It's on Ten Play, the entire series. Oh, Echo Point. Yeah, yeah because I oh, know wow. someone who was on it. <laughs> so yeah, like Echo, Echo Point seemed to still be to, seemed to still be limping along a bit, but um, yeah, wasn't as popular as the the main two on Seven and Nine. Yeah, seven and ten. Sorry, yeah, I'm thinking of neighbours. Um, yeah, uh, okay. Back to prime time. So, Channel Nine had at seven thirty, Hope and Gloria, an American drama series about women who work for, um, sorry, a woman who works for an egotistical Pittsburgh talk show host. Again, I haven't been able to find anything about this show apart from that uh, uh, the episode that uh, 
that's airing the same night as Frontline, is season one, episode three, uh, aired back in March, and it's titled Salon, It's Been Good to Know You. <laughs> Very awful punny episode title. We love a good pun. A little bit more well-known is uh, What Comes Along at 8 o'clock, which is Frasier. Uh, season two, episode 11 uh, from December 1994, titled Seat of Power. Um, after Fraser's dad bemoans his son's rarefied tastes and avoidance of all that is ordinary, they try to prove him wrong by fixing the toilet. They make the problem worse, of course, call in a plumber and find that they have hired uh, Danny Creasel, a.k.a. Creasel the Weasel, played by John C. McGinley, later of the US sitcom Scrubs, a bully who tormented Niles long ago, and his brother Billy who bullied Fraser. Oh, can you imagine John C. McKinney calling Niles all the girl names? <laughs> Sorry, that's, how, that's a reference to Scrubs, by the way, if you ever watch Scrubs. so uh, Now, uh, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm not too concerned about that, but uh, this episode features one of the uh, guest callers who would call into Fraser's uh, radio show. I believe we've got a clip of that. Hello, Elliot. I'm listening. Well, you see, Dr. Crane, I have this problem. I'm a salesman. Uh, a salesman? How old are you? 43. 43? <laughs> yeah. Tell, let's be truthful. I'm 43. <laughs> no, Elliot, we were not born yesterday. Clearly, you are just an adolescent trying to prove to your little friends how clever you are by getting on the radio. But you know what you're really doing? You're taking time away from people with real problems. Hey, I'm 43. I was going to say my problem is I have a very young-sounding voice that people make fun of all the time. <laughs> Oh, I, I'm so sorry, Elliot. That, that was very insensitive of me. Ha! Got you, Doctor. Do this. <laughs> now, now, I, I can, I can see as soon as uh, Elliot spoke, um, I, I think Adele might uh, recognise who that uh, is. Well, I'm going to say it's Macaulay Culkin. And you're right. You, you win the Tim. fictional Tim Tams yes. this episode. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love Macaulay. <laughs> All right, and uh, last of all, on Channel 10, we've got Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise. <laughs> so uh, in this episode, Ross discovers a unique style of tourism called ecotourism. I don't know what? how you pronounce that. Ecotourism? Eco ecotourism. <laughs> uh, Lynn talks to the experts who specialise in the maintenance of artwork collections and archives and Ian prepares pork steaks with mustard and tarragon. You know, <laughs> I've recently watched on his TikTok uh, him cooking steak Diane, and it was actually looking quite delicious. I <laughs> so, remember when we would watch that and we would just, my mum would just be like, how many times is he using that tea towel? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> to clean stuff and wipe yeah. it down and put it on his shoulder and... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I have two things off the back of what you're just saying, Daniel. So I looked up Echo mm -hmm. Point, and it had yeah. Martin Henderson, who's who's a very seasoned actor, and he's on Virgin River uh, at the moment. That's his main show, which oh. my mum and I are very addicted to. <laughs> and Rose Byrne was on it as well. That's it. And, Rose um, Byrne. I was going to think of Rose Byrne. Yeah, so she's very seasoned. <laughs> um, and then I just, off Macaulay Culkin, I have this weird side fact, is at one point he, I can't remember why, but he put his phone number up on Twitter or something like that, and I <laughs> saved it into my phone. <laughs> so I have, yeah. for no reason whatsoever, Macaulay Culkin in my phone directory on my call phone. Call it, call <laughs> it, call it. It probably doesn't work anymore. <laughs> But I don't want the uh, high charges on my phone. Oh, my what? Phone. Do, you, do you want me to call it? No. Hold on. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I, I can if you want. Let me just patch my phone through the desk. I, 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 I will admit this This is the, the most impromptu thing I think we've, we've ever done. And obviously, if this doesn't work, it's never going to make it to the edit. Okay, uh, oh, no, I'm going to leave it in there. Hold on. How long ago was it? Oh, it was probably about six years, seven years ago. Oh, okay, least. then it yeah. probably won't exist then. Yeah, now. yeah. No, but even then, even then, it'll be interesting to see who who got Macaulay Culkin's number. <laughs> yeah. Did they did they recycle it? Oh, that's true. Now they're alone. just getting some random. Hey, Macaulay. Yeah. I'm waiting for him. Hey, do you want to be on a podcast about a bunch of comedy people you've never heard of? <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm lucky they don't get John Blackman from Telecom Mobile Net. <laughs> that, that's it. Rig him up and just Blackman him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Adele sent me the number. Let me. Oh, wait. It's. Yeah, I don't okay, know on. what the the calling code is. Okay, hold on. I th- it'll because be it's plus America. Plus one, I guess. It'll be but... pl- oh, now oh, I've oh. got John Blackman in my head going, Mr. Summers. Me, hey, Mr. Summers. Hey, Mr. Mr. Summers. Summers. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. I'll just block my number first uh, and then zero, zero. Just, just what while you're making that uh, that phone call, um, there was one final thing I uh, saw in the the Green Guide listing. I noticed that at two fifteen a.m. Uh, on Tuesday, uh, that the ABC are airing a movie called Roadhouse. Roadhouse, oh, mm. excellent. <laughs> now it, it's Roadhouse, the nineteen thirty four mystery starring Violet Lorraine. Not so excellent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> A barmaid turned music hall star helps solve a murder in her nightclub. Repeat black and white PG. All Aww. things that the that other roadhouse definitely isn't. Barmaid, there's there's a connection. <laughs> okay, oh here we go. All right. It's, it's paired. He's not gonna be awake, it's 146 AM. <laughs> we'll, we'll soon find out. He is now. Okay, it's cool. okay hold on. Can't hear anything at the moment. Yeah. Is it just ringing at all? Just says calling. <laughs> hmm. Mm. No, nope, it's not working. Oh. Oh. Well. Uh, that might be a blessing in disguise, maybe. <laughs> uh, we tried. All right. Well, other than that, Daniel, is that for you? Oh well, it? I have to ring someone else and ask if Mister Wall is there. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's that's it from a very packed uh, program guide, um, with which has had so many tangents. I'm going to be very surprised to, as to which ones make the edit. Yeah, same here. <laughs> so let's 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 get on with the episode proper. Cool. All right, let's get into it. And Adele, guess what? What? You're doing the intro. Oh no! <laughs> Ready to do your best Mike Moore impression? I'll count you in. Okay. So, Golden Tonsils ready. <laughs> Bring on your best bogan. Uh, I'm too Mike. <laughs> Hello, I'm Adele. No, 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 oh, no, wait. No, no. Three, <laughs> two, okay. two in. Hello, I'm Adele. This is Frontline Season 2, Episode 5, Basic Instincts. Broadcast Monday, August 21st, 1995. Hey, lovely. Yes, thank, very, <sighs> thank you very much, Adele. Uh, Brooke Vandenberg, eat your heart out. So, uh, yeah, the synopsis for this episode, when a frontline cameraman tapes a savage bashing, the story is aired with disastrous results. Yeah, this is not the most pleasant episode I've given you to review. <laughs> you should have gone. <laughs> <God, laughs> no, why, why, why couldn't it have been the building the playground for the kiddies episode like you originally sent it? Well, we actually have another guest lined up for that one, so That's they right. never I, asked. I actually liked the premise of this episode because it felt a little bit current day where we have a lot of people filming stuff and not actually yeah. going and helping yeah. so yeah and i just like well yeah I'm, i mean this, this this sort of thing i mean this so the only thing you could sort of compare it to in 1995 would have been probably rodney king mm. but yeah, yeah these days with now now everybody's got a camera in their pocket yeah yeah. Yeah. And uh, what I thought of was was actually a film that I saw around this time when I was at uni. And it's a film from 1969 called Medium Cool. And basically, the film opens with um, a film cameraman and a sound recordist. And they're filming this really gruesome car accident. And there's a woman who's like, whose body is covered in blood and splayed out all over the road. And they're filming it. And, you know, just it goes on and on for ages and then there are still cars driving by none of them are stopping to help this really horrible car accident you know and then there's a there's a bridge nearby and you can see this guy walking and he's just looking at the 
at the scene and just not doing anything. And then wow. the, the the film crew just get into the car and they just go, yeah, we should probably call the police now. And and the whole the cool. whole thing is like a comment on like you know the media are there to just get the shocking footage. They're not helping people. And the public are exactly the same. And they're basically saying everyone's to blame. No one's helping people in distress. Mm. So I think I think this is basically that. And clearly this this concern that society's not doing anything to help others um, has been around for like decades before this episode. Mm. But yeah, it's and, and we're still talking about it today. There are just people who see some people having a fight or or something happening and they'll film it. And they'll they'll send it off to the newspapers or whatever and get their get their fifty bucks, and then then they might call the ambulance. Might mm. you know that that's basically what this is all about. Yeah, I I did like though how the the camera guy just kept having this moral kind of back yeah. and forth, back and forth. But um, it really sat heavy on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the the comedy twist at the end. The, where it just didn't matter. It was just like I had a big like ha laugh at mm. the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This episode overall made me anxious because, as I've mentioned numerous times throughout this podcast, that I've developed a crush on Emma, the character, and mm. uh, throughout this whole thing, with what she goes through, it's just like uh, I feel the stress, like all the shit. She's trying to have two lives, one personal mm. and one working life, and for her, it both don't work out. Yeah, and I, I was just very, I like kind of felt for her because she had, she she has a lot on in her job, and it's like you have that in media where it's like you, you you're go go go. You're not just nine to five. You have to be very heavily involved and. Um, and if you try and have an external life, it's it it, it kind of can it, it get, like I guess it gets told that it's then pull straining on your de- on your job, <laughs> so you can't have like yeah. these multiple uh, lives going on. But yeah, so you so you were like Jeffrey, you were feeling full on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I I was on Jeffrey's side with this. But speaking of yeah, because Je- yeah, this this episode sort of starts with. Stilted banter. <laughs> really. Oh God, the, the, the sparkling repartee. <laughs> <laughs> Is, isn't it amazing to finally see Jeffrey Salter doing his job? Yeah. We, you know, we yeah. never, we've never seen him present the weather, and now we finally do. And he's kind of, he's decent at the weather bit, but the handover to the newsreader is terrible. Yes, I loved it. I. I was like, oh, actually, I like this episode you've given me because it opens with Santo <laughs> and, yeah. doing, and just he gets to do, yeah, his job. And then, the yeah, the band is just like, oh, it's so good because it's so we'll, bad. We'll need to cross more than just our fingers. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Tomorrow yeah. everything will be very squiggly. Just like that. Yeah. <laughs> he he should have gone with that. He should have gone with that. <laughs> It's all revealed that it's on a TV in the pub um, with uh, the, the, the nice little uh, joke of uh, coming up his front line and they immediately flick over his neighbours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gee, yeah. I wonder what episode that was. Was that probably when, oh, wait, it's 95, so that means Natalie and Brooklyn would be on it. I'm sorry. I, I watched Neighbours religiously in the 90s. Leave me alone. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, with the, that, they're at that <laughs> But I can't believe I admitted that. Everyone, everyone has watched it at one point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even even I was sucked into watching the finale. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I, no, I was never never, never watched it before. Didn't care a, a jot. But yeah, they they got me with the finale. Still haven't gone back to it now that it's back. Uh, how long has it been back for? What nine months? Oh, yeah. Something like that. It's almost a year now, I think. Yeah. 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 I didn't watch the finale, but I saw all the clips and photos and tweets about the finale, so I feel like I've yeah. watched it. I loved it. Judge me. Bring it on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Guy Pierce. That I, I loved yeah. Guy Pierce. Guy like Pierce, just a uh, totally a completely different actor to all the rest of them. That's why you know, he's thought, he's yeah. gone full on down the drama prestige drama route, you know? Mm. That's what I got from him, that he looked like he really leaned back into it and really he, yeah. he looked like he was yeah. having a good time from what I saw. 
Yeah. Speaking of good times, Emma is having a good time on a date <laughs> <laughs> after Marty mis- the team Marty Stu and Jace mistake her for a, an attractive woman from behind. And she's got quite a good looking boyfriend as well. Yes, yeah, so I thought that. I was like, oh, she's done well for herself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so after their disgust, I should say, as in realised all oh, perving on Emma, uh, Stu. Has, heads home in the frontline van only to stumble upon something disturbing off screen. Which yeah, later, here comes the moment. Then Stu turns up at Marty's front door to show him the footage that he actually got. What a gift. Oh, can you believe it? I mean, I, I was just driving by. Mate, you're the luckiest asshole around. I, I, I dream of this sort of stuff. It just goes on and on and on. I cannot believe my luck. Was the kid all right? I don't know. Well, they started coming after me. I hope the kids are right. I call the cops. Can I get a pedantry here? Because I've got something to say about this bit. Pedantry. He's shooting it on a broadcast camera. He's using Betacam SP. He takes it to Marty's house. Marty, unless he suddenly got the ability to play a Betacam SP, would presumably have a VHS player. So how can he play the tape? The only thing I'm thinking of is maybe they patched it in. This is where my nerdiness comes in. That they might have had oh, RCA. So they've got a cable they've from the camera. The RCA, cable. RCA yeah. leads. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. All right, maybe you can unpedantry that, but actually, but I just thought there, there is a lot. You, 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 you guys have been able to to reach for DVDs. I'm able to reach for this. It's an yes. RCA to HDMI converter. Because <laughs> <laughs> I bought I, I bought a DVD VCR combo at an auction, and I'm trying to uh, hook, hook it up to an HDMI recorder. It's not quite the same as holding up a DVD, but there you go. It's it's a it's a little box with the the yellow, uh, red and white in one end, and you plug the HDMI in the other end, and so you, so yeah. you reckon that Stu had one of those with him, and they he hooked it up to Marty's TV. Yeah, they got it from Tandy. With the <laughs> okay. Tandy, All right, well, me, ped, pedantry solved then. Would they okay. also like? <laughs> I don't know back then with those those t- cameras. Could they watch back? through the camera what they'd filmed or did they have to watch everything Good back? You'd, you'd presumably have hmm. a cable that you could plug into a TV it, from the camera and you'd play it out from the camera, Yeah, they you? might mm-hmm. into the back of the yeah. van maybe. They had a little TV in the van. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, anyway. Okay. If you, if, if you know about any of this uh, tech uh, AV geek stuff, uh, feel free to contact Call us. Call in now. Yeah, what, Call. what's your theory? Because <laughs> they're, Mar- they're in Marty's living room, okay? So there's got to be some kind of cable. I don't or... trust Marty has any cables. I don't think he's a type. Oh, Stu has brought the cable. He absolutely <laughs> okay, has. Okay, Stu's brought it. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Right to this address that flashes up on your screen. Yeah. Now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Call in now. <laughs> yeah. The next morning in the frontline office, <laughs> Emma walks in a little late with a bit of pep in her step, uh, much to Mike's dismay. And Mike grills Emma about the prep for his euthanasia debate, which she's currently working on. So, uh, God, even though that she did turn up five minutes, was it after Mike did? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you notice okay. that uh, Dom's hair or the head piece. That she's wearing. Oh, D- Dom is still doing the hair comedy this week, which is fantastic. <laughs> Marty, Stu and Sam review Stu's assault footage with Emma pointing out that the kid is still in the hospital, uh, labelled critically okay, much to Stu's dismay. Although, although mind you, he's, he's, sort of, he's, he's had these doubts very early on. I mean, it, it happened when he was showing the footage to Marty that night. It was sort of like, you know, I called the cops, should I have done something... I should have done something. I just kept filming. And now it's getting to that point where in today's day and age, if you filmed it on your phone or whatever, it's like, oh, do I just create a a new account on YouTube or Instagram or post it on Reddit or or TikTok or whatever and under an anonymous account? Well, also you've got, you've got the choice. Do you call the cops or do you film? You can't do both at the same time. Or send it to fail army, one or the other. (laughs) Yeah. I had a question just going back to when he was in the car when he first saw stuff happening. Yeah, when he when he when he grabs the camera. Yeah, oh. and um there's a song playing on the radio and I looked in the credits and I don't see it's like 
you know, like sound or whatever, it's its original soundtrack or whatever. And I'm just wondering if the music that's in the show, like in the bar and that's in the in the car, whether that's some of the working dog guys actually singing themselves because or they're making it themselves. I, I think that they've been using copyrighted music. Oh, okay. Um, I, I, I should have. Yeah, I they're, 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 the, the working dog people probably aren't performing in yeah. it. I, I I couldn't work out what it was either, but yeah. um, I googled the lyrics and couldn't find anything. Yeah. I mean, the the person that that does the music for Frontline, his name's Craig Craig Harness, mm-hmm. and he was also doing a whole bunch of musical stuff for them uh, in uh, the late show, and I think Funky Squad as well. Right. So it could just be something that Craig's uh, made up just specifically for background yeah, use. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't work out what it was, unfortunately. Yeah. And it's years before Zlad came into the picture as well. So uh, no, <laughs> no Eurovision Zlad. <laughs> Imagine that, Luke, Stu in the car, uh, driving down, <laughs> watching the assault happen, and you just see electronic supersonic. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I love that. Anyway, sorry. I will not, no, 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 no. This is what this whole podcast is about. You just chime in with whatever you've got. So. Yeah, it's just something that I was like, what is that? We love this sort of like going deep into it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Emma gets a bouquet of flowers in the office from her new boyfriend, much to Brooke's dismay. There's a lot of dismays happening in early in the episode. Oh, they are so pissed off, aren't they? Oh, oh wow. who are they for? Emma. Oh. Emma they're from David. Sounds what? so nice. Oh, Emma, you've got to bring him in here. We want to meet him. <laughs> Is he? There's a card in there. Um, oh, the the card. Emma, has that Michael Hutchins interview been confirmed? Sorry? The interview with Michael Hutchins has it been confirmed. Yes. Well, when did that happen? Yesterday. Well, thanks for telling me. Rock the B I T C H. Yes. Yeah, she thinks the flowers are for her, doesn't she? <laughs> it's like we, you know, was it was it last week's uh, last episode or the episode before when the girls go out for a drink in, at the pub and they came back oh, yeah. over and, and Brooks we like, didn't we didn't go out. out. <laughs> so, yeah, starting to feel a bit left out, are you, Brooke? Poor Brooke, I feel I feel her hardworking pain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she can she can just ring up someone from her black book and get have an amazing night out with them, like like Pat Cash or someone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Mike's stunned about the flowers too, much to Emma's dismay, <laughs> especially when drink. Mike- Oh, good. yeah, all right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, the fact that Mike just like well, it's Emma. <laughs> uh, Stu's feeling major guilt about the footage, but Sam and Marty. Reassure him that it's all okay. I still feel bad. I mean, people are going to know I stood around while a kid got his head beat. Stu, Stu, they're not going to know. All right? This tape was handed in to us anonymously. Anonymously. <laughs> so. That was never going to work. <laughs> and then, so who is this from? Alan Smithy. <laughs> oh, thank you for laughing at that. I know that was really obscure. <laughs> Very obscure. I know yeah. that one. <laughs> uh, for, the, for, the, for, for, for those that, that don't know, Alan Smithy is a name that was at the Directors Guild of America. Uh, uh, it's it's a, a name that, that, that they gave uh, for, for a directing credit Pseudonym. when the director wanted to disavow themselves of uh, of of the credit. Yeah. Um. It's 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 no no longer in use anymore though. But yeah, there's a there's a long list of of uh, films directed by Alan Smithy. I know someone, um, a friend of mine who works in animation, and he he doesn't put his proper name on stuff that he works on. It kind of sounds if you say it, it sounds like his name, but the way it's written isn't his name. So it's kind of his way of doing a pseudonym, but not really. <laughs> So, huh. so when it's like John Smith, his name is he goes Son Smith. <laughs> switches to, just to no one would ever know. No. It's so that he can both distance himself from the ru- rubbish projects, but also be connected with, <laughs> by the good ones. But the thing is, though, if it's a rubbish project, is it just his opinion that's a rubbish project, or has it been? As in audience-wise or just bad reviews, it's like, no, this is a rubbish project. When, when do you draw as the a, line, as a, as a crew, so you, when you uh, side sidestep, when, when you sign on to um, animated projects, you don't know what it's what it's going to be like or 
what it's even about sometimes. You're just taking the job. And this is what I see on Twitter a lot with people that don't work in the animation uh, world. They'll be like, oh, my God, like, why did you work on this? What? And it's like we don't know what these shows are going to be like or what they're even about. And then as a collective, when you start on the show, it reveals itself pretty quickly uh, if it's a crap production. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then you're just like, I'm um, here for the collaboration, I'm here for the crew, I'm here for the pay and we'll see it through to the end <laughs> so so I've I have worked on some rubbish ones and uh and you just had to stick it through until you are looking for your next gig yeah so you get that juicy paycheck <laughs> yeah very mm. very bad damp <laughs> damp paycheck <laughs> <laughs> not even really that wet <laughs> It's just moist. Moist. <laughs> there we go. That, that's a cringe word for you, everyone. With the anonymous amateur footage, uh, even Mike knows better. That is incredible. The quality of those handy cams they used to. Must have had one of those stabilizers on it. Marty and Mike then argue who should cover the story, which Mike ends up taking the story off Marty's hands. They'll bite him on the last later on, I'm sure. Now, he but the lady's it. got. He, des- he deserves it. Coming yeah. in and trying to muscle in on on that that gig that wasn't his. <laughs> <laughs> Marty's like, yeah, take it, whatever. The ladies gossip over whether they've seen Emma's new boat, while Brooke is pissed off that her desk phone is ringing and no one's answering it. But Dom answers to discover it's Michael Hutchinson's manager, valet, uh, to both of them actually, uh, which he which she directs to Emma's desk. And uh, of course, didn't originally, like, please correct me. Oh, no, it was Russell Crowe. Never mind. I just answered my own question. I think it was in regards to Brooke was. What's the question? What's the question? We know the answer. What's the question? See, this is how my ADHD brain works. Uh, (laughs) um, It was a couple of episodes ago where Brooke was given the option to interview Russell Crowe or Gareth Evans, and she chose Gareth Evans. Do you remember that episode? I think it was like last, uh, towards the end of Might season one. Might have been one. an episode or two ago. They're sitting yeah. around, uh, it was with the government one or, I don't know. It was, it was just one of those episodes. I just remember. I think that might have been the very first episode. Yeah, it was um, in season one. No, no, like, uh, oh, yeah, in, uh, one, one big family episode. Yeah, there we go. That's, and it wasn't the implication that she had a bit of a run-in with Russell Crowe and... You know, she clearly yeah. hadn't with Evans, yeah. right, I guess. Because e- yes. Evans, well, as as we later discovered, Evans was off with Cheryl Kernow, wasn't he? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Uh, so now Brooke complains to Sam about Emma having a boyfriend that could be a distraction. They also do watch the same footage. Amateur footage. Amateur? Mm. That's SP beta cam. They're on it. See, it's SP beta cam. Now, with that, Emma's being bombarded with her workload, nothing that she can't handle. This is where I'm feeling the stress. I can go, ah, anxiety, bring it. This the, the thing underlying this episode, I think, is that Emma basically does all the work around the office. Like, you know, she does all Mike's work. She does quite a lot of Brooke's work, you know, and no wonder they're pissed off that she's, you know, not there for their animal. Because, yes. They might have to do something. Uh-huh. Well, what doesn't he want us to ask him? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes, I'm writing it down. In my promo department's waiting for a rundown. Travelling. And David's on hold. Uh, yeah. Yep, I've got all that. Yeah, thanks, Lydia. OK, bye. Um, Kate, write this down quickly. Paulie Yates, Kylie Minogue, last album flop. What's it for? Now, tell David I'll call him back and the flowers are gorgeous. Okay. Em, what's it for? Just so much going on. Oh, it really gets yeah. me when she's like, Em, what's it for? And I'm like, shout it. <laughs> Yell it out. <laughs> it's like the kids just... on Amazing. Behind you, yeah. the keys behind you. <laughs> it's just like such a, what's it for? And I'm like, oh, no, you would yell that. <laughs> of course she's not going to hear you. Mike goes over his story on the assault footage with Jeff. I can't rely on Emma these days. You know, the euthanasia debate? Mm. Hadn't done a thing yet. Why not? Apparently she's got a boyfriend. Really? Yeah, I'm surprised too. You're kidding. Oh, oh my, my reaction goodness. exactly. Oh. Emma's got a boyfriend. You right? What's the matter? Um, 
Oh, nothing. What's the matter? Hey, that's pretty amazing, though, isn't it? Amateur footage. That looks like broadcast quality SP beta cam. <laughs> <laughs> there's a moment. Oh, oh there's there's a oh, moment. Jeff. Oh, yeah. poor Jeff. Where he goes, like when um he's asked, "What's what's the matter?" and like he's like, "Oh, nothing." And Santo does mm-hmm. this little little smile, and I don't know if he's either him being his character or he's about to break, like he's trying not to break or something or giggle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but when he did that, yeah. when he goes, "Oh, oh, she's got," a, I'm like, "Oh no, Jeffrey." <laughs> You know what that reminds me of? Like a real life version of that from the Simpsons episode where Ralph's heart breaks. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you can pinpoint exactly what frame yeah. by frame. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you pause it, you can tell. <laughs> yeah. You can see where Jeff's heart breaks. But then it just snaps straight into that. Oh, it's SB Peter Cam. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Poor Jeff, thinking he had he had a chance. If only someone would. Send her back into that small little editing room to spend time with him, <laughs> where he hides. Uh, he he did have a, a chance with was it Delilah? Um, who was the, the uh, that's right at the party? Uh, yeah, man, oh man, yeah. who decided to go get a lift home with Jace that night. <laughs> Now, Mike has it out with Sam over the footage and realizing it was all shot by Stu. Stu. What, he's not happy with the way he shot it? No, Mike. It's a bit shaky or something? No, oh, look, he filmed for two and a half minutes while the kid got his head kicked in. Oh, God, that's disgraceful. Gee, Sam, people are going to pick that up like that. It's not disgraceful. Of course it's disgraceful. I mean, he put self-interest ahead of personal principle, and that's the way our viewers are going to view it. That's why we've said it was handed in to us anonymously. He was going to make it look like a home video. Well, what? Well, I go on air and lie. Then I'm doing exactly what Stu did. That's even more disgraceful. All right, then. I'll give it to Marty. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you could I'll almost you could almost think that when he's like our viewers are gonna meant, uh, see that that he's like concerned for the viewers, but he's not. It's just concerned that it's gonna come back on him. <laughs> <his Yeah. job. laughs> it's all about self interest in the yeah. end, isn't it? <laughs> and yeah, this is this is starting to remind me of that the 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 hostage episode, uh, the siege episode rather. Um, in that, yeah, everybody has their decision to make. So like, Stu has made his decision and now Mike's making his decision and it's sort of it's all starting to compound now. After Mike does his report, uh, Sam notices that Mike's reporting is too flowery. Emma was meant to help out, but she was too busy to help Mike write the story. Gee, I wonder why. Team meet celebrations to wrap up the night and the cracks are starting to show. Where's Em? Gone home. Oh, yeah. Well, she's sick. In love. Sam, it's a worry. This Michael Hutchins interview's tomorrow and she's not done a scrap of research yet. Gee, you might have to think of your own questions. At least I can hold on to my own story. No, no, I agree. It's a bit of a concern. <laughs> the euthanasia debate hasn't got off the ground. What? Hasn't booked a guest. Mm-hmm. Might as well do it myself. No, no, don't do that, Mike. Um, I'll talk to Emma. Okay. Well, I'm out of here. See hey, Stu. Don't forget your camera, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah, God, everyone's just having a ribbing about that, aren't they? Oh yeah. That's because they know they know that it's they know like they got gold, but they also know it's not good, and it's so they all can sense yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to work it's, it's out. It's not going to be a good look. No. Yeah. So they're trying it's to dodgy gold. Yeah, they've got yeah. to direct their ribbing at somewhere, and it's they're just going to do it at the camera guy. <laughs> Shift the blame, and the fact that uh, their go-to or their safety net Emma is not around. Mm. So when she's trying to live a life, she's actually. Suffering at the same time. Mm. Yeah, it's it's also at this point that uh, Mike inadvertently blabs to the rest of the office that uh, she shot the footage. Yeah. <laughs> We've got to find out. <laughs> Just did it so carelessly as well. Because even I went, oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> idiot. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you 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 trust him with his secret uh, with your secrets now, won't you? Sam consults Stu, explaining that he was. Just doing his job. It's nothing different from the My Lai massacre. Which, uh, yeah, happened in the 60s. Next morning, Brooke chats to Emma about her boyfriend and her duties at work. Emma, I just have one thing to say. We work in current affairs. We're very lucky girls. We're good at our jobs because we've always been focused. That's funny. I thought we were good at our jobs because we've always had someone to write our questions for us. 
I'm only trying to help out. Burn. <laughs> Burn. Oh. Yeah. Love, I love the use of that we. I've worked with many people who are like that. That was good. I liked that. Oh, she just walked out. Mm. <laughs> now, Mike vents to Sam that he's concerned about Emma's losing focus. focus. Yeah, there we go. Much to everyone's dismay. Drink. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Other than the euthanasia debate prep, uh, Mike asks about the story on Stu's footage. Journalists have been arguing this dilemma for decades. Mm, we have. What's the difference between a, between a cameraman who films a war and a cameraman who films a local street bash? Nothing. Nothing. It's that old chestnut. I know, but you and I, we, OK, have a duty to the public to let them know what's happening out there. It's a burden. It's the Milo Massacre principle. Yeah. Milo Massacre principle. Puts it in perspective, old me lie. So Mike ends up going on ABC Radio again, talking to Peter Couchman. So I think they were it was right with this season where they've gone from commercial to ABC. Mm. Probably too much advertising. It is kind of unusual in this era that that they would be promoting a commercial current affairs program on the ABC because that was still not really done. The ABC promoted other ABC stuff. It would very rarely do commercial stuff mm. and commercial current affairs would generally have a deal with a commercial station. But anyway, whatever. I guess it was easier for them to get Couchman to make Frontline yeah. the sitcom. But then again, so, yeah. commercial products and the ABC. Who says you can't advertise on the ABC? <laughs> <laughs> not bad, not bad. Thank you. That's a fresh one. They haven't heard that, Adele. So. <laughs> Again, I mean. Oh my God, I've given birth to a catchphrase. Yes. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I've only got pedantry, and you've got you've got this massive big thing. <laughs> I'm gonna have people shouting it at me in the supermarket. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you should have on the on your T-shirt. Who says you can't advertise on the ABC? <laughs> And I just go and stand in the back of live cross- uh, crosses to News Twenty Four. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he's on. He's on the air at at three LO. Yeah, that's three LO. Yes, uh, he's on there, um, and he drops the <laughs> the Milai references uh, to no avail of success. Uh, but viewers have gotten on onto the footage. Mike, look, we've got a woman on the phone who says that she actually took this kid to hospital. Oh yeah. Um, Andrea, go ahead. Yes, hello, Peter. Um, I wanted to ask Mike Moore a question. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead. If he says that they got the footage anonymously, how can he explain the fact that there was a frontline car opposite the park? Oh, busted. Yeah. And Stu did mention at the beginning when he was leaving the pub that he did have the frontline van. Mm. And, yeah, uh, as it says in the, the script book, Mike is somewhat like a rabbit in a spotlight. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mike's pissed off that he's been made out to be a liar, which Sam admits that the show has lied, and Marty calls out Mike's radio spot. Tell me, when was the Me Lie Massacre? Shut up, Marty. You're just as responsible as Stu for this whole mess. Excuse me, you're the one that went on air and bullshitted. Hey, if anyone bullshitted, it was you two. You told me it was amateur footage. You didn't complain when you found out it wasn't. You know, I should take the rap. Sam, easy EP should take the fall. <laughs> I love it. his tone changes from it was you, you're the arsehole type thing, and then oh wait, we can blame someone else. Yeah. I <laughs> love I love the his shut up. <laughs> shut up. So, <laughs> it's so sharp and cutting. Yeah, yeah, I really like it. It's uh it's a really good delivery. It, it's also the kind of thing that, you know, you would sort of say to your friends. At school, yep. you know, it's like real, real schoolroom yeah. kind of banter. <laughs> it is. You know? Exactly, the, exactly. Yeah, the whole, yeah. the whole thing is, yeah, it's just like, shut up. Look, it's their fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. Do- I didn't do it. <laughs> they made me do it. <laughs> it's arch nemesis, arch nemesis, arch nemesis. Thinks yeah. of an escape gate. Oh, come join me. Yeah. <laughs> Let's pair up. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mike's guest uh, for the euthanasia debate calls up and Brooke's off to do her interview with Michael Hutchins, only to discover it's changed time, which Brooke blames Emma 
for having a boyfriend for not telling her. Uh, but Emma points out that it's been up on the whiteboard for the last 24 hours. Uh, this is where everything's starting to come to clash, where uh, Emma hasn't been there for all of them. Brooke is in the car with Stu and Jace while trying to come up with questions that Brooke was expecting Emma to do. So she gets on the blow. Hello? Did Emma leave any information for this Hutchins piece? No. Nothing. Oh, she asked me to write down a couple of things when she was talking to his manager. Oh, that's something. Read them out to me. Got a pen? Yep. Paula Yates' Kylie Minogue last album flop. Now, an- another slight pedantry, but... Oh, hold on. You would think... You, you would think... Oh, yeah, go on. Oh, bloody hell. Give me time. This, this is on a touch screen, so I've got to keep changing it. I'm going to give you a... I'll give you a... Pedantry. Disco pedantry. Yeah. Uh, okay. You would think seeing the words last album flop uh, might indicate that it's a bit of a no-go zone, wouldn't you think? But yeah, it's Brooke. I, like, I like, is, 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 is anybody really this. willing to talk about their last album flopping? Uh, well, well, I, th- I know- think I would say because she so doesn't do her own job that she's just not connected to the stuff that she's asking because she's about... She wouldn't have cottoned on. She wouldn't on. have cottoned yeah. on. She's just like, I need my questions. I need to do my interview. I need to look good. And I haven't actually, not connected to whoever she's actually interviewing. She just knows it's this person. They're well known. I've got, I've got no time to, to analyse these subjects. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. That's how I see it. So she probably went in there and went, so... How do you feel about your last album flopping? <laughs> and he would have been like, <laughs> "What? <laughs> I'm out of here." <laughs> She'd be like, "What?" <laughs> Which, uh, well, yeah, that's pretty much what happens, yeah. Hey, Adele, what's the worst thing that you have worked on? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, bring, you don't have to bring it up. So, oh, so I go. do have the answer to that question. Oh, you do, <laughs> but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> That's okay. We can talk about it offline. Yeah. <laughs> All good. So it wasn't Pacific Heat then. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, definitely not. Don't definitely say that. Not. We need a deal back for that entire season. Look, <laughs> uh, uh, no, definitely not. I've worked on a worse project. <laughs> All right. <laughs> for, the, for the sake of your pro- professional career, let's move on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We don't badmouth uh, the projects that we've been on publicly <laughs> or currently <laughs> fair enough but i was looking at the list of discog- discography for uh in excess and the last album that they had this was 95 so the mm. previous album for mr hutchins was in 93 with in excess full moon dirty hearts no yeah, what was the single of that did he have a single uh the was gift that a flop? please you got that time and freedom deep I, I only know that one as I think they did a, well, not strictly in the style of, of Let It Be, but basically they, they, they did a live uh, uh, a film performance to sort of go along with the album, which I think might have been released on VHS as well. It got to peak position was number four. Uh, oh, that's not bad. That's on the that's ARIA charts, yeah. Unless uh, Max Q was in the 80s, wasn't it? Yeah, Max Q. It was yeah, 1989, yeah. yeah. So it wasn't that far back. Although, mind you, I don't think that did too bad either, did I'm it? not going to say a thing because there's going to be someone who's a major in excess Michael Hutchins fan who's going to scrutinise. Who's so, going to take issue. Who's going to take issue, yeah. Just like, you know, the old days of the interest rate chat. <laughs> That's going back to Don't like, say interest rates. Rate. Yeah. Adele, that goes – we we got lambasted for – interest rate talk back in the early episodes. Oh. <laughs> you, you don't want to listen to those. Yep. There's always a fan or person passionate about the, the thing you don't expect. There is someone out there that's... Yeah, they're, they're called 3AW listeners. Oh, okay. Hello to yeah. all our 3AW listeners out there. <laughs> oh, except for the Philip Brady ones. They're, they're friends. <laughs> Philip, they're... Friends of the Champagne Comedy podcast, mm. yeah, yeah. So, so now, now we come to that all important euthanasia debate. No, no, not yet. Jeff and <laughs> oh, sorry, uh, Jeff and Mike are trying to find <laughs> Milai. 
in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a dead tree encyclopedia. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, sounds Hawaiian. <laughs> I love that line. Yeah, and they find Maui. So well done, guys. Um, and now Emma gets back from her lunch date to be in a quiet office and looking reserved and concerned. But Kate tells her that Mike is recording the euthanasia debate, to which Emma hasn't provided any research for Mike. First to you, Ronald. You believe euthanasia should be legalised? Absolutely. It's a fundamental right, currently denied us all. Well, Vanessa, what do you have to say to that? I agree. <laughs> I'm sorry? <laughs> Good debate. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like a relief for him. <laughs> Great. Yeah, it's just unfortunate that it's going to make really bad TV. I, I like how he says legalized. Euthanasia should be legalized. 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 That's the real. That's the real hard hitting voice. That's the like from the siege. Have any shots been fired? <laughs> The fire. There we go. You got the crackle. The, the Emmy double A should teach that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The vocal fry on the ED. <laughs> so when I was in high school, I went along to a, um, it was like a newsreader kind of um, training thing for a day where you went to like our news station down here or something and you learnt to present the news. And I was very nervous back then as a teenager and very introverted and it was something I would have liked to have done but um, I just did not come off very well. <laughs> but, yeah, they did that whole kind of this is how you change to talk when reading mm. the news because I remember back in, like, England when where I'm originally from as a kid, um, you know, the uh, when the BBC news would come on, they'd be like, this is the BBC and all this stuff and it's the way that they would talk and I was like, oh, I love it. <laughs> but I just was not, at age 15, I was not good at it. <laughs> no no gravitas. No, no gravitas as a 15-year-old you know, kid watching animation in the morning. <laughs> Where were you in the, for our previous episode where we were talking about London weekend television? Oh. oh. <laughs> I, ITV regional franchises. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that that should be a whole separate podcast where people who don't really know a whole heap about the topic talk about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I um what I'm so yeah yeah ep ep episode one ITV regional uh, franchises uh, episode two the Milan massacre <laughs> yeah yeah that that's our next special episode where we talk about the three things we know about the Milan massacre yeah, oh. yeah apparently there's a volcano there <laughs> yeah informative stuff <laughs> Mike and Brooke vent to Sam that it's all Emma's fault that their stories have completely fucked up and. Uh, my words, not theirs. Uh, and Sam is sent to Mr. Cavill's office uh, for a discussion over the assault footage with a nice glass of uh, whiskey. Uh, while there are pros to the footage that the police were able to identify the culprits, uh, Mr. Cavill says that the show did in fact lie, which is a rarity for any boss to admit. Yeah, lying never ever happens in current affairs. Nah, not at mm -hmm. all. <laughs> so Sam points out that it was a group effort, but someone does have to take the blame. <laughs> group effort. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's just it's the the the, the nomenclature that, that gets me. Yeah. <laughs> Mike issues an apology on air, uh, which <laughs> I love that how he dodges the bullet. But then he throws to our favourite man, the Friday night funny man, Elliot Rhodes. Petrol prices keep going up like a nighty on a bride. Canberra's taking more and more, taking us for a ride. I reckon we should have named Stu, actually named him. My name was in there. I mean, exonerating myself, but it was still in there. Get on your bike, we can't afford these prices, but the government's all talk. If they keep on taking their slices, I'm gonna get out and walk. But that's so topical today too. I filled up for two dollars a litre, <laughs> <laughs> and I had to sign a mortgage, even though I don't own a house. So, who would be our modern day throw-to comedy guy? 
Would it be? Oh. It, it's. Uh, they kind of don't exist anymore. It kind no, of Sammy J. Don't. Sammy J. S- yes. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. even he, even he's, that finished he's not up. On it anymore. No, or I was yeah. going to no, say he doesn't, he doesn't do it. They 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 got rid of Mark Humphries Mark from Humphreys, seven thirty. Yeah. Yeah, they've gotten rid of them. John Clark's dead. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, there's no one. There's no one. I just, I just loved the time. Ty- like they were serious, and then that, like they deliver that apology. Like here's the apology. Right, we'll make these people, the watchers, forget about it instantly by throwing <laughs> to this comedy guy, and it'll just either make them give them a jolt where they don't forget, forget about, about it. it. Yeah. Yeah, just forget about it. it's, like... it's like the current affairs version of a man in black neuralizer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is the neuralizer. <laughs> <laughs> what apology. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we lied. What, when, when you hear the horn, you will forget our apology. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's now going to go in in regular rotation. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brooke corners Emma in the bathroom about her breakup. You may not see it, but having a boyfriend has affected your focus. God, Brooke, you are so hypocritical. God, I'm glad all your boyfriends don't affect your focus. You know, you weren't concerned that David was going to damage my career. You were concerned he was going to damage yours. <sighs> Emma, time heals the pain. <laughs> oh. Dom is the queen of timing. Yeah, I, yeah. I love how she just, just cuts through that sort of scene by just flushing the toilet really loudly and then emerging from the toilet spraying deodorant everywhere. <laughs> Brilliant. And with that, uh, Marty explains to Kate that Stu has been disciplined, uh, getting six weeks holiday on full pay. Now, Emma is still teary over the breakup, which Mike tries to console her behind the closed kitchen door. <laughs> she she walked out of that room f- faster than Michael Hutchins. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I just I, I I do like like the the way that gag is set up in that you don't see what he says, but you know what you know that whatever he said. Oh, oh yeah. No, you know what he? It's not going to work. You know what he did? He walked into the kitchen as he closed the doors, like, "Hey, Emma." <laughs> <laughs> and I love that noise. It's so ridiculous. No, yeah. you, you can have it as a ringtone, text message thing. Uh, weeks later, Stu is back at work with him and Marty out front of the courthouse for a standard report. And while Stu has had a decent break, he's still annoyed that he had to take the rap. Uh, suddenly, a car crash happens right in front of the media scrum and Stu hesitates for one second. <laughs> and then he ends up grabbing the camera. Back on the job. It's great. There's, it's just a great amount of timing of him pondering. Like considering, <laughs> <laughs> and then grabbing his camera and running off screen. It was like that. Uh, hit the what do you call it, the devil and the angel yeah, pop up the, on the shoulders. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, just it's a it's a, a good point to end the episode on, which is well, I mean, we we, we basically just see it at, at face value. You know, like you could say that you may have tried to intervene, but you know, everybody knows that you would have recorded. As well, you know, it doesn't matter what and you, TV station you're with. And you hear you, 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 you would have done you would have done what Frontline did. Yeah, and you hear the rest of them go, "Quick, get the camera!" Like they're all yeah. they're all the same. But that cut to the accident with the dummy through the front window is brutal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that was the bit that made me think of that film, Medium Cool. And if you go on YouTube, you can see. The, the opening sequence of Medium Call and you will understand what I'm talking about because it's basically that. Right, wow. right. God, yeah. I'm going to put a dampener on it. But this is like a foreshadow of... Uh, I'm going to get probably not cancelled. Go on, what so is it? It's like two years well, later. Well, only, only if you leave it in the edit, Matt. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I am the producer after all, right? Um Get that, get that horn ready. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> okay. Now, come on. Uh, just 
Yeah, yeah. Out, out, uh, out, out, out with Princess Diana Tunnel. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. paparazzi taking Although photos. Although, if, if anyone yeah. took photos or video of that, it's never emerged, has it? Because you only ever see, like, footage of very far in the distance. Mm. You can sort yeah. of see the tunnel. Yeah. 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 So you wonder, like, when they those photos did get taken back to their editors and all that stuff, it's just, they're like, uh, maybe we don't put this out. <laughs> yeah. 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 Pin up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, too point, soon. Point. <laughs> edit. Edit point. <laughs> edit point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I have <laughs> a very visual imagination, so as soon as you said pin up, I imagined my my wall with these pin ups. Dave Beckham. To, 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 yeah, to, 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 to finish on a, on a good note, what was on your bedroom wall, <laughs> Um Oh, then 1995. It definitely would have had uh, Johnny Depp from like 21 Jump Street because I was showing that at the time and uh, mm. uh, Christian. Nothing bad's happened to him at all. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's not He's made it through. Anyway. He's made it through. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Christian Slater and, yeah, yeah. Um, Christian Slater's done all right. Um, <laughs> bit, yeah. of, bit of Keanu maybe or. No, uh, my uh... friend had, my my friend had um, the Keanu Reeves uh, poster where he's he was standing nude with some with holding a shirt Ooh. over his crotch, and I remember looking at it, going, oh, "That's a bit much." <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> clutch my pearls at mm. fourteen. <laughs> you 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 had your little awakening moment, perhaps. Oh, I think my I think my awakening moment might have been Jeff Goldblum in Jurassic Park. So. <laughs> <laughs> that black shirt and the the necklace with the blue thing. <laughs> ah, that's brave to admit. And then again, he it is common standard. These like well, it is a common. So it was around the same time, right? So it's well, that was a little bit earlier. So it was either that, or it was Gambit in the original X Men series, which was around that age fourteen. You know what? I get that uh, whole reference. The other two, I'm sure, don't. <laughs> so. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but then again... R- well, the the kind of posters that I had on my wall were kind of... Pictures of the Late Show cast and, and well, what I'm showing up, what I'm holding up to the screen is the cover of Frontline, the story behind the story, behind the stories, <laughs> with Mike Moore in full kind of, mm, it's a mm. serious issue. <laughs> Actually, um, I so I'm sitting where I'm sitting now. So I'm sitting in my home office, but um, this actually because I'm back in my family's uh, house. Um, this used to be my teenage bedroom, and I've recently renovated it. And this little um, ho- uh, little kind of hovel that I'm sitting in front of used to be my teenage cupboard with the double doors, and inside the double doors was where I stuck all my posters. Of all my yeah. heartthrobs back then. <laughs> so, is that, is that an recent- ATAT in the background? Oh yeah, there's a bunch of Lego behind me. I have oh. cabinets of collectibles all over the place. But um, yeah, I used to when I opened it up, there was a a little um picture of um cut out of the TV week of um Sean McHale. <laughs> <laughs> from yeah, history. good choice. Michaela good choice. <laughs> Early days. There's nothing wrong with the silver fox. No, it's <laughs> comedy is very attractive. <laughs> <laughs> So that concludes Frontline Season 2, Episode 5, and the Champagne Comedy Podcast, Episode 58. Hooray, we made it! I I don't know how much (laughs) I'm going to remove from this episode. Wow, it's been really, really, really cool. Lots of really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I've loved all all the tangents and, uh, um, yeah, especially having you on as a guest, Adele. Oh, I've... Yeah. It's been great. I love it. <laughs> We're going to now call this podcast the Champagne Tangent Podcast <laughs> or the Tangent Comedy Podcast, one or the other. Uh, but, yeah, feel free to reach out to us. Email champagnelaidshow at gmail.com. Oh, I can't talk. 
You can email us champagne late show at gmail.com. Plus, check out the show's notes for the our socials because there's just too many of them. Uh, Facebook, search for the Champagne Comedy Podcast Group, as well as buymeacoffee.com slash TLS Champagne Pod. Contribute a dollar. You know, mm. it'll, it'll buy us a coffee. We're, 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 yeah, only, uh, only if you like us. Only if, yeah, don't take any of it out though. <laughs> so, yeah, it's out we, to, don't, we don't. We don't want your pity dollar. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> also, if they're only giving us a dollar, that's really not very much of a coffee. No, that's like a fifth of it. That's like a sixth of a coffee. That's or something. a Seven it, Eleven coffee. <laughs> yes, thank yeah. you. Yes, oh, especially okay. when you use the app. So if you scan that and you get that 50 cents off as well, so bargain. <laughs> anyway, uh, a special thank you as well. Adele, K. Thomas, you have been absolutely amazing. We're sorry mm. that we've gone on random bits and pieces, but thank you for bringing so much stories and your yeah. knowledge to the show and other really cool bits and pieces. And, uh, yeah, like like how can anyone reach out to you like your works like website socials whatever you want to share oh yeah so i have an instagram and, and i'm on twitter it's just all adele k thomas so if, if you just google that i come up <laughs> okay fair enough <laughs> yeah just google me i, I appear <laughs> Mate, that's with the k as well with so. a k letter k yeah like michael yeah. j fox but my k is actually a real middle name <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way to own that because you don't want to get confused with Adele J. Thomas or anyone like that. No, that's that's Ah. specifically why the K is there. (laughs) (laughs) And also thank you as well, Alison and Daniel, for coming on. Um, And also thank you for everyone for listening, especially when we've recorded this on an Easter Saturday (laughs) where, yeah, we don't have a Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much. Um, And I'm Matt. Thanks for listening. Catch you next episode. Bye. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Champagne Comedy Podcast, created by fans for the fans. For more information on this podcast, please visit champagnecomedy.com. Produced by Matt Fulton Productions. (laughs) mattfulton.com.au Yeah. Let me roll away the rock. It's a new car!